coming up on Mountain News this morning. People here in Perry County continue to deal with being left without water as crews work hard to restore the flow. And a group of churches from our region host a heartfelt event to show appreciation to those who risk their life on the front lines to keep us safe. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. It's 6 one now on your Tuesday morning. I'm Dakota Makris, and well, hope you're bundled up with something warm because it is a little bit cold out there. Let's head over to Brandon for a look at our forecast. And Brandon, that cold just, just hit me like a truck when I walked out this morning. I was like, ooh, I was not prepared for this. But the good news is the temperatures are actually moving in the right direction right. already. They usually get to, to their lowest point around mm -hmm. 7 o'clock, but they're already starting to go back up, okay. so that's some good news as you head out the door. So grab your jackets regardless. We're still in the 20s and 30s. Let's take a look at the camera first at over at Lake Cumberland and Pulaski County there from our friends over at Speeda. It's looking pretty calm out that way this morning. No major issues. Take you back to the temperature map and you'll see from 21 to 32. That is our range this morning. So folks going up just a hair, but uh, Clintwood, of course, the coldest spot in our region. Moorhead, the warmest spot, but a lot of folks in the upper 20s and low 30s out there to start your day. So a little extra on the coffee meter to max warming needed, depending on if you were like Dakota and the cold air just hit you as you walked out the door this morning. And as we take a look at your forecast for the next dozen hours, if you're grabbing some breakfast like a donut as you head out the door, should be a fairly nice day. Temperatures in the mid 50s with a mix of sun and clouds. Dakota. All right, Brendan, thank you. Well, water issues have been the theme across the mountains since the Arctic blast before Christmas, but few have felt the pain as much as Little Leatherwood in southern Perry County. People there were without water for more than two weeks. Our Keaton Hall looked into the situation. Leatherwood Elementary was forced to close on Monday as the area suffers with continuing water outages. My mom is 80, lives right down here below me, and she was climbing over a hill to fill a five-gallon bucket up to flush a commode and fail. Thankfully, didn't get hurt, but she could have. Susie Wooten and her community of Little Leatherwood finally got water back on Monday after 15 days. Wooten says it's a yearly issue, but this time was the worst. Said it's, it's tough when you, you get older and you got to come home and you got to carry water and you got to heat water and you got to deal with it. I have to go to a family's house and take a shower and go to a family's house and do laundry and it's just it's frustrating. All of Perry County is served by the City of Hazard water system, so getting water to places like Leatherwood can be challenging. It's the same plant that they had you know, when it was built, that was designed just to do the city of Hazard, and now we're feeding the whole county. A new water plant is planned for Buckhorn, which could alleviate some of the strain on the system. If you could take off the whole north end of the county, which would be fed by uh, the Buckhorn plant, then that cuts down on uh, stretching our plant out that far. But Wooten is worried her area is being left behind. You know, Southern Prairie County seems to be left out a lot. Um, road conditions, I'm sure you noticed on the way up, our road conditions, we're the last. Um, water, we're the last. With tanks filling up, Eversol sees water being back to all of Leatherwood by Monday night or Tuesday. In Leatherwood, Keaton Hall, WYMT Mountain News. Governor Andy Bashir announced $9 million in funding for the Buckhorn water plant in September, but construction on it has yet to begin. Well, business owners in the region are cheering each other on as they work to reopen after the flooding in July. The Isom Community Pharmacy has been open since one been open one month after the disaster, but pharmacist Scott Burris says the other businesses to bring in more consumers for everyone and help the community overall. Obviously, I hope we get back better than we were, but we are just super excited for the other businesses around us to get open, the IGA, the bank. Uh, the ISM IGA is scheduled a reopening in this spring. Well, it is fire prevention week at one Eastern Kentucky volunteer fire department. The classes have been going on for more than 20 years. We were able to talk with the fire department about the importance of these lessons. Head Start students from Mountain View Elementary stopped by the Thousand Sticks Volunteer Fire Department on Monday. Learning life-saving fire tips. We're here for you guys. You know, we're not here to hurt. We're here to protect. And um, I like to show, go around schools and stuff and show the kids like, what we look like, then get in our gear. 
teaching the importance of having working smoke detectors inside of their homes. If you hear them chirp, just go let your parents know that they're chirping, that the batteries need to be changed. Service them every year. A more than 20 year tradition of teaching fire safety to the younger generations of Eastern Kentuckians. And the more participation, the better. I love when they come out and they say, hey, I want to participate with you in the stop, drop and roll. More than welcome to. Try to teach the kids, like, if you want to do something like this, now's a good time to start learning. Even though you're a little bit young, but you could, you could go and watch us and you can come to some of the little get togethers we have. Encouraging kids to call 911 if they ever have an emergency. We're not out there to hurt. We go out there and we save, we save a life or two, it makes my day. In Leslie County, Dakota Makeris, WYMT Mountain News. Well, the fire department will host more groups of students today and Wednesday. Well, aiming to serve those who serve their communities, six churches from the Corbin area came together to feed those on the front lines. Local law enforcement officials were able to stop by the Corbin Center early yesterday to relax and enjoy a hot meal. The churches involved in this event hosted something similar for hospital staff back in 2021, and volunteers say they would love to give back to other professions in the future. We don't want to stop here. Uh, we want to continue to do different things, again, just to love people in the community who don't always feel loved. I know we've already started talking about a way to give back to teachers um, who have been a very impacted uh, people, especially since COVID happened. And um, there's always negative news about them, but we love them and we know that they're on the front line. Well, those involved with this event say in a world that can be so divided, it feels good to create a sense of unity with other churches to give back. One Pike County flower shop is preparing for Valentine's Day, asking the community to help send love to local nursing homes. Our buddy Forbes has more about the floral shop's plan for planting a little positivity. A little love goes a long way. If you could just see the faces of some of these residents, you would completely understand why we give these to them. And this Valentine's Day, that love is going from Reed Family Floral to a few local nursing homes. It really makes you feel good because a lot of these residents at the long-term care facilities, you know, they don't have much family. And especially the ones that don't have any visitors, just taking them that bud vase, it really just brightens their whole day, maybe even week and year. A program created last year to provide rosebud vases to nearly 100 seniors has bloomed into a countywide effort, hoping to reach residents in three assisted living facilities. It gives them joy. I love flowers. Um, who doesn't? Asking the community to adopt a senior, paying the price of a single rosebud vase and allowing the residents to keep the change. It also brightens their mood. Their mood is like, will totally change. An effort that owner Evan Sykes hopes to continue arranging for years to come. And now it's grown to the point, you know, if I can get enough sponsors, I will take bud bases wherever they need to go. Saying it is not about the flowers. So I encourage everyone, even if you don't have the financial means to sponsor a bud vase, just get out and visit your local residents. Do anything you can to bring them joy. It is all about the feeling. They just want to share that love as well. And sharing love is what the world's about. In Pike County, Buddy Forbes, WYMT Mountain News. Sykes hopes to see more than 230 people find sponsors this year. You can find out how to be part of the project on the Reed Family Floral, Floral Facebook page. Six oh nine here on this Tuesday. We are watching some cold temperatures out there this morning. Let's take a look at the map and you'll see 21 to 32 temperatures actually on the way up in some areas this morning. So that's a good sign already. Temperatures still though between about five and 15 degrees colder than they were this time yesterday morning. Actually 16 degrees colder over toward Jonesville. But again, lots colder yesterday or from lots colder today and from 24 hours ago. I'll get those words in the right over here in just a second. 54 this afternoon, mild sun and clouds. It's going to be a nice day, but enjoy it. Changes are coming. Dakota? All right, Brandon, thank you so much. It's almost 610 when we come back here on Mountain News this morning. President Joe Biden might be facing a legal headache after documents marked as classified were found at a location linked to his time as vice president.